touched you, Father. And so we're saying thank you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just remain standing for just a second. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus, yet here thanking you again. For you are God all by yourself. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to see another day. And I thank you for it, Lord. And those here that, Lord, uh, you allowed to be here and those that you allow to see us today, Lord, open up their spiritual eyes, open up their hearts and their understanding to your word. We thank you so much, Lord. And, Lord, I want to ask a, a special prayer for Mother Mary Lee Smith, uh, who is there in Chicago, Lord, and I ask you to touch her body, Lord. Touch her right now. Lord, touch the doctors that they know what to do. Hallelujah, Lord. She's your servant, oh God. And I'm asking you on her behalf, Lord, that you touch her body right now. Encourage her heart. Encourage her mind. Give her a mind and a heart to go on and continue with you. In Jesus' name. Let every heart say thank God and amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Amen. And that God continue to bless our older saints uh, who are yet in the fight, but the, uh, the age and the body doesn't allow them to do much, but they are yet in the fight. Yes. Amen. And they're in the fight just by praying for us, uh, giving a prayer for Pastor Harmon to give him strength yes. that he can continue to preach uh, your word, oh God. Yes. Thank you, son. Amen. And let me say thank you to my friends there on Facebook who have joined us. Thank you so much uh, for those that have joined us today. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to come into your, your home. Uh, some of you at work and some of you maybe even driving down the road. Please be safe. But thank you for allowing me uh, to come into your area and to share God's word with you. We also thank our subscribers on uh, YouTube, even though it ain't many of you, but I thank God for you. Hallelujah. And this is how it is, tends to be when you preach the unadulterated truth. Amen. You don't have a big old section over here that they call the amen section. In fact, they may have a few of those sections. Well, uh, we don't get that here. Hallelujah. Ain't too many people want to hear the truth. Amen. And if this is your first time, some of you have sent us a friend request. And we took as many as we could. We took as many friends as we could as you don't get take so many. Uh, so we have not been ignoring you. Please just continue to, to send your comments and thank you. And those of you who are new and this is probably your first time, I am Pastor Harmon. I'm the pastor here at Way of Life Ministries. We're located here on 2557 North 74th Street here in Wauwatosa. Amen. A lot of times when Pastor Harmon is preaching, I'll refer to this area here as the pit. When I refer to this area as the pit, I'm talking about the pit of hell, the pit of no return. And my friend, uh, whether you believe it or not, that place is still there. Hallelujah. And I'm here every Sunday and, and trying to uh, uh, divert your uh, path from here. Amen. I'm trying to lead you to Christ. I am God's traffic cop. Uh, and as a traffic cop, I, I don't have too many friends. Amen. I don't have too many uh, pats on the back. Amen. It's, it's not something, it's not a, 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 a rewarding job, but I'm telling you, my friend, uh, this is the best job or one of the best jobs you could ever have. Amen. Because when payday comes, uh -huh, uh, I have life everlasting. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And this road is death. Amen. And all we're here to do is try to preach to you and change your job title. Amen. From sinner to saint. Uh, not from sinner to Christian be, because you're still in the same old category. Hallelujah. Uh, if you are a saint, then you serve the most high God. Hallelujah. And before we get started, we'd like to read you with the death clock is screaming and hollering. Amen. We, these are sad numbers. We don't like to give these numbers, but in giving this, you may be able to see yourself. Hallelujah. And the death clock is reported deaths as of midnight. And this is for every day. This particular one I give is just for the United States. 
But there's a death clock that tells you worldwide uh, the number of deaths. Amen. And let me refresh this whole thing here. And as of midnight, uh, the death clock is yelling, screaming, and stomping that it has claimed 3,639 souls. Hallelujah. I would, it, I would be so happy, my friend, if all of those souls had went on to be with the Lord. But unfortunately, my friend, uh, that is not the case. So many have gone here to the pit. And there is not anything a Pastor Harmon can preach or say or do uh, to get you out of that place. Hallelujah. There's nothing no one can do uh, once you arrive there. But as long as you can hear my voice, as long as the blood is pumping through those veins of yours, you have a chance. It does not matter what you have done. Hallelujah. He will forgive you. All you have to do is ask him. All you got to do is ask him to forgive you and change uh, your mind and your way of thinking about things. And ask God to come into your heart and change you and save you. Hallelujah. He's just and he'll do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he went to the cross for. For you. For I. For the world. Hallelujah. Brother DJ, are you with me? I am. Thank God that DJ is back. Hallelujah. You will hear his voice today. Uh, sometimes when uh, Elder Deacon comes, uh, he will relinquish that uh, uh, to the elder. And that's how it should be. And it, if the elder accepts, fine. If he doesn't, uh, then you'll hear uh, DJ back at it. Hallelujah. Now, you all there on Facebook, I tell you that you're so blessed. Because you already have uh, the title of, of today's message. Amen. Uh, Rochelle don't know the title. I tell you so often that she's not a Facebooker. So she doesn't have, have the title of the message. And she don't sit down and discuss it at night with me. Amen. I don't sit down on Saturday night and write out a message. Amen. Some of you pastors... Uh, you, you start on Sunday evening and you just finish it up on Saturday uh, what you want to tell people. Hallelujah. Uh, but listen, my friend, whatever God's given me to preach on, that's what you're going to hear. I won't change one iota of his word. In fact, why don't you get your Bible out? You that are sitting there, get your Bible out right now and follow Pastor Harmon through the scripture. Hallelujah. Get you a, a, a pen or paper, too, so that you can take some notes. Hallelujah. And I won't change one iota of God's word. And now, friend, listen, if sometime, if this is your first time I said, uh, Pastor Harmon is somewhat of a long-winded preacher. I don't seem long-winded to me, but to others say my message is a little long. Well, listen, friend, let me tell you something. You've just been used to hearing, your, hearing those lollipop preachers, those five-minute preachers. And that's why you don't know anything. Hallelujah. When I go to, through the scripture with you, I have to take you through and show you. Mm -hmm. I just can't give you one or two scriptures and, and send you on your way. No, that's not what a good teacher does. Hallelujah. Uh, we as teachers and preachers, we're responsible for what we give you. Hallelujah. And if I give you a little bit without clarifying those things, I haven't done my duty. Hallelujah. You can go out there and run yourself crazy trying to figure out what Pastor Harmon said. That's why it takes me a little time to get through the scripture. And then you that are just getting, just got saved, you're just now meeting the Lord. You came on the battlefield and you've been out here on the battlefield or maybe you're in your Bible study class. Hallelujah. You on the battlefield, uh, but uh, you still need to learn some things. Hallelujah. That's why I have to come and take my time with you. Uh, some of you folks may understand Pastor Harmon right here. Uh huh. But what about the fella that doesn't understand that he's here? I got to get all the way down here mm -hmm, so that everybody understands what Pastor Harmon is preaching. And follow me and see if I change it in the book. Hallelujah. If I don't change it in the book, it's the truth. If I start to give you my opinion and all those things, Oh, brother, I'm on shaky grounds, and so are you if you accept it. Hallelujah. Uh, DJ, if you with me, today's title of the message is Abide in the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Abide in the Lord Jesus. Some of you uh, uh, found out that you thought you would, had been serving him for over 40 years. 
Or maybe you were the head deacon at your church. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even you were the pastor. Hallelujah. And, and you've been listening to Pastor Harmon go uh, through the scripture and you found out uh, you've just been trying to serve God and you've been doing it in vain. Hallelujah. You found out that you weren't even on the battlefield and you thought you was. Oh, that's all right, friend, but now you are on the battlefield. We're going to attempt to help you to show you how to put up those little spiritual dukes and fight the enemy off. Uh, listen, if you're, if you're on the battlefield, let me ask you to pray for me right now. Let me ask you, uh, Mother Mary Smith, if you're listening today, uh, pray for Pastor Harmon. I, I need it. Uh, because when I get in front of this camera here, when I start to preach, and even before then, uh, the, the spiritual battle is on. I'm already up here fighting uh, demon spirits. If you could see, if God would open up your spiritual eye and show you all the opposition that's standing here against me, you would understand now. That's why I solicit, solicit your prayers. If you are a saint of the most high God, begin to pray for Pastor Harmon. Hallelujah. Now, if you're just a Christian, mm -hmm, if you're just getting up, because you just come out of the club and you, you, you was on your way to church. Uh, don't pray for me. It ain't, he ain't going to hear that. He don't hear you. Hallelujah. If you have one of these churches and everything is dark in there. Hallelujah. Ain't not one light in there. Or uh, maybe they red and blue and all that stuff. You might as well go on back down there to, to the club. And don't even tempt to pray for Pastor Harmon. Uh, you wasting that breath you got. Uh, what you should do is get down on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Uh, don't waste it on me. Ask God to forgive you. Do something constructive with it. Brother DJ, let's get on over to St. John, the 15th chapter. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to keep time here. I'm going to glance back at this old clock every once in a while because I know a lot of folks' attention span ain't there. So I'm going to try to get through this scripture. And uh, as I go through the scripture, uh, I may have to go to another scripture. God may give me to go here. Uh, so that it's you, there's a further understanding of what the scripture is saying. Hallelujah. DJ, when you get to St. Saint, Saint John chapter 15, let's go. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Now this is Jesus speaking, that he, and he alone, is the true vine. Uh-huh. And that his father is the husband man, or, or the garden keeper, Rochelle. Uh, there are many times when uh, Rochelle, she's the the garden keeper at home, she goes there and she got nice little flower bushes all around there. It looks all uh, pretty and everything. And each year she has to get out there and do some, some pruning and clipping things away. Uh -huh. Sometimes there's weeds grow up and, and she'll get there and spread that dirt apart and get that reed out there by the root and get it out of there. And then she'll go back and make it all look all pretty. Hallelujah. I think if I had to keep the flowers, it would, probably wouldn't be nothing there but dirt. Hallelujah. But that girl makes, makes it feel like a home. Hallelujah. Jesus is the true vine, Rochelle, and his father is the husband man. Go ahead, son. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Let's hope. I want you to read nice and loud, uh, Brother DJ. I'm going to have you, let me get out this jacket. I want you to read that again. Read it nice and loud. Every branch in me that beareth so not fruit. Some of the branches. Every branch. Uh, listen, folks. The scripture says that every branch that beareth not fruit, mm -hmm, he taketh away. So if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a saint of God, mm -hmm, and there's no fruit here, you don't, you, they say if it walk like a duck, if it quack like a duck, it's a duck. If you say you're a saint of God, uh, but every five minutes you're cursing. Mm -hmm. If you say you're a saint of God, young man, uh, but you just can't keep your eyes off the women uh -huh, or the boys, whichever one, uh -huh. don't claim uh, you're a saint of God. Uh, he going to take that branch away. Uh, lady, if you claim to be a sanctified woman and you look like your jeans look like somebody sprayed them on you, uh -huh, and you got to get, get yourself in the mirror and crisco yourself up, jump up and down and slip them on, uh -huh, uh, you're going you you, you to be clipped off. Read, son. And every branch that bear fruit, he mm -hmm. purges it. Now, every branch that bear fruit. Uh huh. I told you, Rochelle gets out there in that yard. She start clipping those the dead things off, and then the things start to flourish. It even it, look, it grows bigger than what it was. Uh huh. So you, young man, who has just got on the battlefield here, there's some things you don't know yet. 
God won't hold you accountable for them, but now you're going to learn that he will hold you accountable if you don't take his yoke upon you and learn of him. You just can't say, God save me, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn as you go on your own. No, 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 no. That's why you need to be in here at Sunday school. That's why you need to be at your Bible band or, or, or any other Bible study you have, learning more about him and getting in the book and reading it yourself. You need to ask God to open up your understanding. Hallelujah. You need to uh, take Pastor Harmon's message, rewind it back. And not, not only mine, uh, some of these other preachers that are preaching the unadulterated truth. Now, if you uh, think uh, you can listen to the lollipop preacher and you're going to get something out of that, and that's Joel Osteen, uh, don't be a fool. Hallelujah. He already done told folks that he ain't going to preach on sin. Uh, the folks been hurt already. They hurt enough. Well, listen, friend, my job as a preacher to, is, is to expose sin and give you the truth and lead you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's my job. Hallelujah. Bishop T.D. Jake's job is, uh, yeah, well, I guess he, his job is to help make movies, mm -hmm. help produce records and all that stuff. Hallelujah. But us true men of God is to lead you to the Savior. Hallelujah. Uh, maybe you don't know something that is, is a sin. Well, we expose that thing and we show you that, uh, brother, we can't do this. Sister, this ain't what we do. Now ask God to forgive you. Let's pray together that God will forgive you and then we can fight together. Read on, son. Every branch that bear fruit, he purges it. Uh-huh. You that see, if, if you bear some fruit, God will take, start to nip off those little things. I told you all that just got in the fight with me, that standing, standing side by side with me. You may not know everything you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's why you tuned in here on Sunday morning. Uh-huh, because you're going to learn some things. Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. God made it so that you would know that. You're going to hear it from Pastor Harmon. He's using this tool right here and others like me. Yeah, because you done got in the fight. And now he's going to take some things off you. The way he takes it off, he exposes it. It comes out of my mouth. It comes out of some other pastor mouth that God uh, sent. And to tell you, you can't do that. We're not supposed to do that. And then you ask God to forgive you. That, uh, that was all those little dead leaves being cut off. Hallelujah. And once those things are cut off, you start to grow. Mm -hmm. Read on, son. Verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word. Uh -huh. I know so folks want to tell you, you're clean if you get baptized. I hear so many people, talk, you ask them how they say, you say, yeah, yeah I was baptized uh, back when I was an uh, infant. Uh I hope it was warm water and I hope it had some soap because that's all that happened. Maybe they, they gave you a little bath. Uh-huh. Uh, you weren't baptized. You did, these kids, you run these kids through talking about baptizing. They have no understanding of what's going on. Hallelujah. They're not of the age of accountability uh, until they're 12. Or if they know be, be, before 12, then they're accountable. Hallelujah. You can't take a 10-year-old that don't know nothing about baptism and talk about, yeah, he said he got baptized at five. Get on out of here with that. Uh, that's why I'm telling you, follow me in the book. Hallelujah. Why don't you train him up in the way he should go? And then maybe by the time he's 12 or 13, he'll understand baptism. He'll understand that he can't go out there and do what everybody else is doing. Read, son. Now ye are clean through the word. Which now I, you are clean through the word. This is Jesus speaking. Uh huh. Which I have spoken. Which he, Jesus, has spoken. Hallelujah. Pastor Harmon can get up here and say a whole lot of stuff. It don't mean nothing unless I'm quoting my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. How so many people talk about what my pastor said? I don't care what your pastor said. Uh, let me show you, friend. If you keep following what your pastor said, uh, you end up right here in the pit. Hallelujah. If your pastor said, these are the words of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm with him. Hallelujah. We say, with thus saith the Lord. Not what Donnie wants to say, or not what Pastor Harmon wants to say. Hallelujah. I don't know no better. All I know is what God give me, and it's true what he give me. Read, son. Abide in me, and I in you. Do you hear this? It says abide in him. Uh, during these old protests here, uh, we have some, some of our uh, saints of God getting out there. Talking about they, I ain't going to let this go. Well, listen to the words of our Lord and Savior. Uh huh. This goes for every situation that are in our lives that happen. Hallelujah. I can't step out of him into myself and do what I want to do. 
You can't make a spiritual war uh, flesh and blood because it's not. Mm -hmm. This ain't about black and white. It ain't about Hispanics and whites. It ain't about none of that. Hallelujah. This is a spiritual battle. I'm not just talking about in the church. I'm talking about throughout the world. Whatever situation you're in, it is a spiritual battle. Satan, we're not ignorant of your devices. Read, son. Abide in me and I in you, mm -hmm. as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. You see, when you start to, to do your own thing, you don't got outside of him. I just can't see me letting this go, one preacher said. Uh-huh. Uh, see, you don't got out of you don't got out of God. You don't stepped over here again. If you just can't let it go, you just better get on your knees and ask God to take that thing out of you. Tell them to purge you. Stop accepting all these videos and email stuff. Stay off the news station. Don't let that stuff just get all in you and make you all upset and want to go hurt somebody. And then you get in there talking about, well, I ain't gonna let this go. I'm sick of this happening. You ought to know better. Hallelujah. This is a spiritual battle. I told your father already, we're not ignorant of his devices. You want to divide us, Satan wants to divide us. Uh, one against the other. Black against white. Mm -hmm. Police against a citizen. Hallelujah. But I'm here to expose that. Hallelujah. We're not here to fight the police. In fact, uh, you preachers, uh, when they had us a curfew here, you ain't had no business out there going down there protesting. Hallelujah. If you were going to protest, you better uh, did it before 9 o'clock and be at home by 9. We obey the laws. I'm not going to be out there fighting with the authorities. When they tell me to be in the house, I'm going to be in the house. Uh, you can call me a coward all you want. But spiritually, I'm a pit bull. I'm ready to fight. I'm always got my hands up, ready to fight your father, the devil. Hallelujah. But I'm going to obey God. When them people tell me to be in the house, you better believe it. Uh, Pastor Herman going to be at home. Uh, don't look for me down there. I'll be at home. Read, son. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, uh -huh. except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept. Ye abide in me. You see this? You can't, we can't do nothing without him, Rochelle. Listen, it doesn't matter how much the, uh, them folks down there downtown talking about uh, where, where are, or where's the clergy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't take orders from them, them folks. It don't matter how uh, the communities get together talking about uh, where are the clergy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I take my orders from the boss. If God tell me to go down there on Jackson Street, you better believe I'm going to be down there. If God ain't told me to do that, I'm going to be at home with this girl right here. Hallelujah. They're praying for you that you don't go down there and kill yourself or be killed. How many folks done went down there protesting and done end up dead? Hallelujah. Let me show you where a lot of them folks done went, fella. Right here to the pit. And we're trying to prevent you from going there. But by the time you get there, it's too late to say, Pastor Harmon was right. Oh, God, forgive me. I'll, I'll go back. I'll be good. No, you won't. You're going to stay right where you're at. I'm delivering you the truth. Will you accept it? Oh, you're going to continue to say, Pastor Harmon, get on out of here with that. Let me tell you, my friend, you that are serving him. Abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or welcome to your new home. Read. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Mm -hmm. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. If you stay in him, abide means to stay there, Rochelle. Abide don't mean just get here for a little while and when things don't go your way or you're a little upset, it's okay to get over here and let some steam off. Uh, that ain't abiding, fella. Mm -mm. He told us to pray for those that despitefully misuse us. Mm -hmm. And some of you ain't nothing happened to you. You going out there fighting somebody else's battle. Hallelujah. When you need to stay on this battlefield. You need to stay on this battlefield fighting for souls. Even the, those bad guys that did what they did, we still need to fight for their souls. We can't throw anybody away. Hallelujah. It's the thing that's in that person that caused them to do such an evil act. Hallelujah. Oh, but I'm required, my friend. 
uh, by my Lord, by my Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. To love the victim as well as the perpetrator. Hallelujah. Let justice uh, take its course. And I tell you, my friend, if justice don't take its course, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody going to get away. You still, one way or the other, going to have to see my boss. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Read on, son. He that abideth in me and I in him, the mm -hmm. same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Do you hear this? I told y'all I can't do nothing without him. Hallelujah. All them little old degrees I got that stick on the wall. Uh huh. Oh, uh, there ain't no cemetery degrees either. Uh, they, there ain't no uh, Bible school degrees. But the ones I got, they don't mean nothing. I can't do anything without him. I done told you that. Hallelujah. Uh, the very reason that I can stand here is because of him. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Mother Mary Smith, the very uh, reason uh, why you're still breathing today, the very reason that you can still hear this old message is because of the Lord, the Savior, Jesus Christ. He loved you just like he loved me. Mm -hmm. Without him, we can't do nothing, sister. Nothing at all. Hallelujah. Read. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is withered, and men gather them. Now, if you don't abide in him, uh, this is what happens. To, uh, Dante, if you will, all uh, uh, you folks that say you abide in him, but you won't do what he says. Uh -huh. Or you'll say your pastor said, uh, or you'll say uh, so-and-so said. Uh, why don't we take this one thing and see what he says and see if you follow this? Uh, because I am to keep all his commandments, not just the ones I like. Uh, Dante, if you will, give, do me a favor. Uh, DJ, put your finger there. Uh, go over there to uh, Matthew chapter 19 and give me verses 8 through about 12. And I'm going to quickly run through this. And uh, uh, you there, uh, understand that some of you just got in a fight. Hallelujah. And some of you say, well, uh, well I, I didn't know. And that's all right. But now that you know, you got to come up to it. I know Berean Pastor Elder Henderson done told you folks he get on he got on a public forum there on Facebook and he told you all that the Holy Ghost will custom fit the word to you. Hallelujah. Now, Pastor, I know you hear my message. And if you made a mistake and misspoke, it's your it's your uh, duty to get online and retract it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, I'm gonna run up the front of you and down the back of you with the lie that you told. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost don't custom fit anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. Some of you folks talking about, oh, I found God. No, you didn't. God wasn't lost. You were lost. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now huh, I see. Hallelujah. God wasn't lost. God wasn't blind. He see everything. Read on, son. Verse 8, he, hmm? he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. Back up. Verse he saith un, unto them, uh-huh. Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. These are the folks coming to justify of their, uh, their divorce from their spouse. Some of you who have just gotten in the fight. Hallelujah. I told you there's some things you don't know. You're going to get to know this one. Mm. Uh, this is one of the things that a whole lot of folks, uh, they, they just can't stand past the harm and for. Hallelujah. Uh, but if you obey it, this is the thing that's going to save your soul. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Read on, son. Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffer you to put away your wives. Mm -hmm. uh, because them folks was hard-headed. Uh, they were just grieving him. So Moses allowed you to do this. This is what Jesus is saying. Go ahead. But. From the beginning, it uh -huh. was not so. But from the beginning, this was not so. Now, let's see if you're going to uh, listen to Jesus. I'll go on that next verse there, son. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He says, now I say. Jesus said, is saying, now I say this. Uh-huh. Whosoever. Whosoever. Shall put away his wife. Shall put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. Except it be. Hold on. Except to be for fornication. Now, uh, this is where I'm going to have to uh, break this down for you, you new folks. 
And for you old bullheaded folks that keep saying, that don't apply to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get on through this verse here and then we're going to go back there. Except for fornication. Mm -hmm. Except for fornication mm -hmm. and shall marry another. And shall marry another. Committeth adultery. Now what about you folks that get, didn't uh, get uh, divorced because uh, she went out and cheated or he went out and cheated? Oh, you, you just couldn't, you just divorced because your finances wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Are you obeying him? No, you're not. Mm -hmm. You want to make an excuse to say, oh, uh, well, uh, well, she committed adultery on me. Let me tell you, my friend, adultery and fornication are two different things. The scripture said, except fornication was committed. Read, finish reading, DJ, and I'm going to go back a little more on that. Go ahead. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And I say unto you, whosoever mm -hmm. shall put away his wife, mm -hmm. except it be for fornication, uh -huh. and shall marry another, uh -huh. committeth adultery. And whosoever marry her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Now you folks are talking about, uh, well, she committed fornication. Well, friend, why don't I give you this? Uh, Dante, very quickly, I'm going to uh, get through this because I want to explain to my new friends. Talking about adult uh, fornication here. Uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, and give me verses 13. 13. Make sure I cover what's there. Uh, DJ, when you get to read it. Now, this is for you folks uh, 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 that talk about uh, you can get rid of your spouse if they commit a fornication. Now, listen, if you are married, you can't commit fornication, you commit adultery. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to see how to abide in him because that's what he just said. Mm hmm. Now, I'm going to explain this real quickly and then we'll go to the scripture. If this woman here had married this man and she said, I'm a virgin, and he said, I'm a virgin, and they came together and got married, and to find out that she done been with somebody before, uh huh, but he wouldn't have known this till after they had come together. Hallelujah. And once he found that out and proved it, she had committed fornication. That's the fornication that Jesus is talking about. That's where you could get a divorce. Hang on in there. Read, DJ. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. If any man take a wife and go in unto her. And if any man take a wife, a black man, a white man, a Gentile, a Jew, a fat with one arm, uh, and she ain't got no toes. If any man take a wife, and go in, in, in unto her and hate her or mean that he finds something he didn't like about her. Uh-huh. Uh, because this was the f first time that they were going to come together. And uh, maybe uh, he didn't like uh, some, whatever it was. He didn't like that about her. He, he want to get rid of her and get another one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, son. And give occasions of speech against her. And he found something that he could talk about her about uh, to, to tell the chief priest, this is why I want to get rid of her. Go ahead. And bring up an evil name upon her. And bring an evil name upon the family because this woman was supposed to be a virgin, but she not. Uh huh. And say, I took this woman, and when uh -huh. I came to her, I found. In other words, I took this woman because she told me that she was a virgin. I married her. We had the ceremony. Then we went to consummate the marriage. Then I found out she wasn't no a virgin. She it didn't say maid there, but a maid means a virgin. I found out she wasn't no virgin. How did he find that out? Because uh, when they had uh, sexual intercourse for the first time, when a woman has sexual intercourse for the first time, uh, her hymen is ruptured, and then there's blood. So what this man is saying, uh, there was no blood there, so this woman lied to me. She deceived me. She had me to marry her on for false pretense. And if the thing was true, he can get rid of her. But other than that, brother, you're stuck like Chuck. Read on, son. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother mm -hmm. take. Then the woman that this man done marry. Her mother and father should come uh, with, with, with the tokens. Uh, this was proof. It was like a little uh, sheet or something laid there. And when they consummated the marriage, it was blood on this here thing. Read on, son. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens mm -hmm. of the damsel's virginity unto mm -hmm. the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife. And he comes before the court. Now, I'm just uh, trying to bring it uh, to a place that which you can understand. And when he brings the, the, the tokens and he's telling the court, look here. These is proof that my daughter was a virgin because the blood was there. Go ahead. I gave my daughter unto this man mm -hmm. to wife and he hateth her. I gave my daughter to him. 
I gave him to her in marriage. And then there was something he didn't like. There was something he didn't like, uh, so he wanted to get rid of, so he done fabricated this story. Uh huh. And lo, he have given occasions of speech against her. And now he done made up a lie about her. How do I know? Because here's the tokens right here. I'm going to spread them out before you. These are the tokens. This is the blood. Read on. Saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. Mm -hmm. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Mm -hmm. And they shall spread the cloth. So the father says, here's proof. My daughter was a virgin. But he didn't, he didn't like, she, maybe, maybe she had one foot longer than another one. Hallelujah. Maybe she didn't, maybe she uh, didn't paint her toenails or some foolishness like that. Whatever. He found something that he wanted to get rid of her for. Uh -huh. Just like you. You want to get rid of the girl. Hallelujah. And then you want to say, well, God said if she commit fornication. Fella, she can't commit fornication if she already married to you. She can only commit adultery. And there's nowhere in the scripture, uh, I know some crooked pastor done told you that the Bible says, well, you can get a divorce because of adultery. Uh, you'll find that nowhere in the scripture. Hallelujah. There is nowhere in the scripture you'll find that. Mm -hmm. So stop listening to what the pastor said. Listen to what Jesus is saying in the book. Read on, son. Verse 18. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Because mm -hmm, they found him lying. And they, they shall... Go ahead. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. That's good, son. Going back over there to St. John. They, were going, they, they was going to chastise him by finding him. And then he had to stay with the woman all her life. So you that had just gotten a fight. Uh, listen, fella. If that's you, uh, the word ain't going to custom fit uh, uh, like uh, Pastor Henderson said. It ain't no, you don't have nothing to say. Well, I wasn't saved then. Hallelujah. I wasn't saved when I was stealing. Well, can I keep stealing? Hallelujah. So that custom fit theory goes out the window. But some of you are still going to be a fool. Well, I'm standing with my pastor. Well, stand on. Hallelujah. And if you keep preaching that garbage, let me show you where it's going to land you. You and your pastor. Right here in the pit. Hallelujah. I told you, pastor, maybe I hope to God that you misspoke. But then you need to come on back out here to straighten it out. Hallelujah. I know your members watch me. Maybe they should, if you don't see it, y'all need to tell your, your pastor. Hallelujah. So we all on the right road. So we all are here together in the fight and we're, we're going to abide in the Lord together. But we can't abide in him. Uh, you saying one thing and we saying another. And I tell you, my friend, only thing we say is what's in the book. Read, son. John uh, 15 and 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. You see, if you can't stay in Christ, if you can't uh, obey all his words, uh, you might not even feel like you cut off, but he just said you cut off. Uh-huh. If you don't want to uh, believe it, uh, for the very words that are in that book, there's no help for you. Uh, I don't care how good you feel. Uh, you can feel like ain't nothing happened. I still feel safe. Uh, uh, my business still flourishing. My home is still good. Uh huh. Uh, my husband do everything I tell him. Oh, weak fella. He watch this. A uh, jump. Mm hmm. And he got the nerve to ask you, "Hi, hi." What a fool. And some of you weak men. That's all you do. You sit up under some woman pastor, and everything they tell you to do, uh, there you is running. That's why some of you men, your home ain't, can't stand because your wife she want a real man. She wants somebody to tell her no every once in a while. And all you can do is say yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, honey. Yes, this. Yes, that. Oh, I want a car that we can't afford. Don't worry about it, baby. I work another job. What a fool. Why don't you learn how to stand up and be a man? You got to be able to tell that woman no sometime. You can't give her everything. No, we're not doing that. I don't care how uh, well, she want to sleep in the other room. Yeah, huh? Uh, listen, fella. If you be a man, you wouldn't have to worry about all that. Read, son. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. I, I want you to read burnt. that. Start again to that. If a man abide not in me. Verse mm -hmm. 6. If a man abide not in me. Now, this mean woman too. So, uh, lady, don't think uh, it ain't talking to you. It's talking about you too. If a man abide in me. Uh-huh. If a man abide, abide not, not in me. Uh -huh. Not in me. He is cast forth as a branch. And he is withered. cut off and cast forth as a branch. He is cut off when Rochelle cut them old weeds there, I told you. She get out there and she snipped this thing off uh, because it's dead. It can't get any more uh, nutrients to it. 
When you disobey God, uh, God can't give you any more nutrients. Now, it's impossible for you to grow. So what did he do? He sent an old pastor like me to come and preach to you, to hoping to revive that old thing. Hallelujah. And once you revive, there's still some stuff hanging on to you. Uh, we cut that off. Uh-huh. We look all around you. We cut that off. And cut that off. And then you start to grow. Hallelujah. But those things that are cut off, what do you do with them, DJ? Uh, they're withered. Uh-huh. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. They're gathered and they're cast into the fire. Because they're no good for nothing. When them old uh, tree branches don't grow no more. When leaves won't, you cut that thing up, throw it right there in the fire. Uh, that's what it's saying about us here as men and women. When we would refuse to receive him. Hallelujah. When you refuse correction and you die in that thing. Let me tell you, friend, you're cast into the pit. Maybe you served 40 years in the church. Hallelujah. Uh, maybe maybe it was uh, uh, you served 50 years uh huh, and your wife served 40. Hallelujah. And if you don't obey him, fella, this is where you're going to go. If you refuse to cut off all that stuff that's dead, this is where you're going to go. Hallelujah. And then there's a young man, a baby got saved today. Uh huh. Maybe got saved at midnight today. Hallelujah. Uh huh. And then uh, uh, something took his life. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, but see, he had asked the Savior to save him. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of things he did not know. Uh, God welcomes him in. Hallelujah. But you that will not accept correction, friend, this is what's waiting on you. But I told you I'm God's traffic cop to try to prevent that, to try to correct you. Hallelujah. And I'm giving it to you right out of the book. I ain't changed one word. Read, son. Verse 7, if ye abide in me, mm -hmm. and my words abide in ye, in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, a lot of us don't want to abide in him. The, uh, it may be a tough pill to swallow to come out of that old adultery. Hallelujah. Oh, some of you are probably sitting there right now, and we're going to do something on marriage again. Uh, but you there with your second wife or your second husband. Hallelujah. Let me just show you how goofed up and messed up you are. Hallelujah. Uh, you still got feelings for the ex-wife and you, you going over there where she is and, and you have sex with her. Hallelujah. You think you done sinned against God because uh, you had sex with the ex-wife. Uh, listen, friend, you, ain't, you haven't sinned. Uh, the sin is you sleeping with the second wife that you with every day. The one that the judge puts you together with. That's the one you sinning with every day. Hallelujah. Because the first wife, God said there is no such thing as divorce. Mm -hmm. But see, I told you the world don't give me my orders. My orders and every saint of God's order comes from the boss. Hallelujah. Uh, the first wife, if she's still living, is the only one that you're supposed to have a sexual relationship. Uh, and, and the first husband is the only one lady that you're supposed to have a, a sexual relationship with. Mm -hmm. The one you're married to now, you think, uh, as backwards as you are, uh, you think that that, one, that relationship is right. But according to God, that's the one that's in fornication or adultery. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to abide in him. These ain't Pastor Harmon's words. You can see them right there in the book. Read on, son. Verse 8. Herein is my father glorified mm -hmm. that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Some of you don't, you don't got, got any fruit about nothing. Some of your own conversations are so kernel. And I sit back sometimes and I'm like, wow, this is what they're teaching over there? Your, your conversation about uh, women, your conversation about other different things, is not godly. Hallelujah. These things should not be. How can we abide in him? And we, well, sometimes I cuss when I get mad. Uh, sometimes I cuss because I want people to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to make a point. My friend, these things should not be. Read on, son. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Mm -hmm. Continue ye in my love. No, just uh, whenever you don't feel like it, it's all right and go and get mad. Is that what it said, DJ? It did not. It says, continue ye in my love. And then he says, if you love me, Rochelle, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. How can you continue in him if you won't keep his commandments? How can you say you love him if you won't keep his commandments? 
Hallelujah. Read, son. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. There, right, right even there. Even as mm -hmm. I can. If, there's an if there. Mm -hmm. There's a condition there. Hallelujah. Read that again, son. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. If you keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments. Ye shall abide. Oh, uh, I'm my sorry, love. DJ. Did that say commandment or was there, is there an S at the end of there? Commandments. Uh -huh. So you just can't pick out one or two that you like. He says, if you keep his commandments, uh, ye shall abide in his love. Even as he has kept the father's commandments, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Read on, son. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Hallelujah. Read on. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another. This is my commandment. This is the Lord speaking. This is my commandment, that ye love one another. Listen, when Pastor Harmon here is giving correction, it ain't the shame you I done told you that. It's because I love you and I want you to get the truth. Hallelujah. Uh, lady pastor, I love you. I want you to get the truth. Uh, you got some misunderstanding about some things. Hallelujah. But I want to give you the truth. Uh, Dante, uh, if you will, uh, give me Joel. Give me Joel, Old Testament. Give me chapter 2 and verse 28. Hallelujah. God ain't called you to preach, lady. Joel 2 and, tw yeah, Joel 2 and 28. Give me that real quick. DJ, when you get there, let's read. Listen, when a uh, uh, lady passed, I know a lot of you talking about uh, God said in the last day he going to call you to preach. That ain't what it said. You refuse to read the scripture. You refuse when I give you the scripture or some good preacher give you the scripture, you like to change it. Hallelujah. But read the scripture. Read some when you get there. It says... And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. This is the all. prophet Joel prophesying. Uh-huh. Talking about in the last days. And then we're going to go there to Acts because that's when this prophecy was fulfilled. Read on, son. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh-huh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now, lady pastor, I know you like to put in there preach because that's what... Most of you talk to, you, you, that's the first thing you tell me. Well, God said in the last days that his sons and daughters shall preach and this and that. And I say, where did he say that at? Uh, you just heard somebody else say, you can't even give me the scripture for it. And then when I give you the scripture for it, how you go, well, I got to get my Bible. Well, what kind of Bible you got? Hallelujah. Read on, son. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Okay. Now get me over there to Acts, uh, Dante, 2 and 17. 2, 17 and 18 in Acts. Uh, listen, young folks, you just getting saved. Uh, don't let these folks start telling you, oh, that you sound good and you can be a preacher. And then you start getting this old spirit. And the woman pastor come tell you, yeah, this how it happened to me. And then God called me. I know a lot of people say, but I know what God called. Oh, uh, woman, God ain't called and told you nothing. Look at what the scripture says. Every one of you talking about, they say, God said your son and daughter should preach. That say prophesy. Preaching and prophesying are not the same. Preaching is, is, is to expound the word of God. Hallelujah. Which you're not supposed to do. A prophesying is to foretell a future event. You can't prophesy something Isaiah said already. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is quoting. But you want to prophesy some nut uh, talking about he prophesied uh, the pandemic. Oh, uh, you a prophet lie. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself prophesied these things. Hallelujah. You need to sit down somewhere and learn something. Get in the book and ask God to open it up to you. Read, son. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, mm -hmm. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is Brother Peter uh, here telling us. Uh, about the prophet Joel's prophecy coming to pass, lady. Here it is in two instances that's verified for you that it don't say that you're going to get out there and preach. Read, son. And it shall come to pass in the last days, mm -hmm. saying, God, I will pour out of my spirit upon uh -huh. all flesh, and your sons and your daughters. Here we go again. They shall, shall what? Prophesy. They shall prophesy. Uh huh. And your young men shall see visions, 
and your old man shall see dream mm -hmm. dreams. Give me that next verse. And on on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. All right. Didn't say nothing about you preaching, lady. Hallelujah. Get on back over there to John. Now, every time you uh, come up with this garbage here, talking about, well, the Lord said, I'm going to prophesy in the last day. Stop lying. He ain't told you nothing. Hallelujah. Then, uh, let me get one more here, DJ. Give me over there. Uh, Dante, if you will, give me uh, tw uh, St. John uh, 20, and 20 and 17. Hallelujah. 20, 20 and 15 and 17. 15 through 17. Uh, this is when Jesus had rose from the dead. And you women use this also talking about uh, he told Mary to go preach. So if he told Mary, uh, that means us too. Uh, listen, if I tell Deacon Harmon there, I say, Deacon Harmon, go over there and tell Rochelle I'll be there in 20 minutes. I didn't tell him to preach. I told her to go deliver him a message. Read, son. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Uh, this is when Mary was there, went to go look for the body, and uh, she couldn't find his body there. She's there uh, crying and, and weeping because they don't move the Lord, or she thought they moved him. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto her. He said, well, Woman, why weepest thou? Uh huh. Whom seekest thou? Now, that's Jesus. She didn't recognize him, and he said, Woman, who, whom seekest thou? Uh huh. She su supposing him to be a gardener. Uh -huh. See, she didn't even recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. Uh huh. Saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast mm. laid him. If you done moved him, Mr. Gardner, please tell me where you put him. Uh, this is what Mary was saying here. If you moved, my Lord, uh, please, sir, tell me where did you lay his body? Where did you put him? Read on. And I will take him away. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said Hallelujah. Unto, to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Hallelujah. Not yet Dante, Dante, lighten that scripture up. Come on, keep going, son. Touch me not, for I am not yet a sinner. Now, this is the message that he's going to give her. He didn't tell her nowhere here to go preach. You lady preachers that keep talking about uh, Jesus sent Mary, so he sent me too. You liar! What a liar! Hallelujah. Verse 17. Read. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, mm -hmm. for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren. Now, this is the message I want you to deliver. I ain't told you to go deliver it to the world. Go deliver it to my disciples. To my brethren. His brothers, which are his disciples. Uh -huh. Read on. And say unto them, I ascend unto my father. Now, there ain't no way he told you to go and preach uh, to the world. Get on back to St. John, uh, 15th Amen. chapter there. Oh, so lady preacher, I told you I love you. Oh, you just done got twisted and contorted. And I don't care if your bishop did ordain you. Hallelujah. I don't know who ordained him. He don't know nothing either. You go over there to Bishop Hines, he the bishop, his wife the pastor, and his two kids are pastors. Oh, what a nut. N-U-T-T, -T, nut. It don't even, it near about follow the scripture. But there you all out there running to him. And all you folks there with your, you the bishop and you got and your lady is a pastor. What a fool. Why don't you follow what the scripture says? Mm. Oh, maybe he said real good. Oh, maybe he dressed flashy and you like the way he can pronounce words. Uh huh. Oh, what a fool. You'll follow somebody just because they can talk good. you follow somebody because they look good. What a fool. You need to follow somebody that know how to follow the word of God. You be in good hands. And I ain't talking about no all state. Hallelujah. You'll be on the road to eternal life. Hallelujah. I can't uh, wait and, and, and make the word conform to me. Who do I think I am? I got to be renewed in him. I got to change. He don't change. I change. Read, son. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Do you see this? This is how much he love you. This is how much Jesus love you. Friend, let me tell you something if you're listening to me today. I love you so much that I tell you the truth that uh, sometimes I had to worry about my own safety. 
Uh huh. That somebody may see me out there want to do something to me. But I got to tell you the truth. Paul told the Galatians in Galatians 4 and 16, you ain't got to go there, Dante. Uh, but I, have I become your enemy? Because I give you the truth. And that's what I'm asking you, friend. Am I your enemy? Because I give you the truth. Hallelujah. I'm giving you right what the word says. I haven't changed anything. But Jesus laid his life down for me. He laid his life down for you. And I know that sometimes this old girl here get a little get scared by the husband sometimes. She, she may think that uh, somebody out to get him. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've been a pastor, my message ain't changed. Uh huh. I'll go there. Every one of them is online. Go there and see if Pastor Harmon changed one iota. Hallelujah. Uh, pastor Hines said, and uh, you said it right, uh, we have the church. He said, we the church. No, you should have said, I have, because that's what it was. Uh, we have uh, watered down the gospel. And you're absolutely right. You sure have. And you said, we need to get back. No, you got to get back, because if you don't, sir, I don't care how long you've been a bishop. I don't care how many boards you own. If you don't obey the gospel, this is where you'll end up. But I love you. You're my friend. Uh-huh. I know it don't seem like it, but I love you, and you're my friend. I'm right here in front of this old doorway to the pit. Telling you to straighten up and fly right. Yes. Hallelujah. And because I stand here, uh, there's some folks mad at me. Uh-huh. Uh, there's some folks that's ready to attack me. Uh, not just because of you, but, but for anybody I don't preach the truth to. Mm. Mm -hmm. I ain't worried about what you can do to this old body. I want to live as long as I can. But listen, friend, uh, you can't do no more than God allowed, allowed to happen to me. Hallelujah. And if he chooses to take me out of this body, I'm going to go there and be with him. But this message will not change at all. Hallelujah. As long as I got breath in this old body. As long as I can get a, a word out. As long as I can make an utterance. Hallelujah. It's going to be holiness or hell. I hope that you would choose holiness, my friend. I hope that you, you change your way. Hallelujah. If I got to preach to the cotton here by myself, well, that's what's going to happen. Hallelujah. If my wife take out and leave me, if them boys take out here and leave me, anybody, it ain't nobody here. Oh, Fred, I got to stand here and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And I'm convinced my mind oh, has been renewed. And I'm going to stand for God. Oh, keep your finger there, son. Dante, give me uh, Romans chapter 12. Give me verses 1 and 2. My friend, you can't, uh, uh, you can't remain the same. Something has to change in you. You can't be the same. You have to be renewed. You little soldier that just got on the field here. Thank you so much for joining the fight. But you can't remain the same. Hallelujah. I know you done heard that. Uh, uh, that, that God going to conform to you. Don't believe that old garbage. That's what it is. It's garbage. Come right from the pit of hell. Read here, son. Uh, Romans there. I beseech you, therefore. Listen, friend, this is talking to you. Uh, you that just got in the fight and you old folks that been in the fight and don't want to change. Hallelujah. Listen to the words here. He says, I beseech you. Uh, Rochelle, if I could use this word from I beg of you. Listen, friend, I beg of you. I beg of you, therefore, brethren. A uh, read, son. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Uh-huh. By the mercies of God that mm -hmm. ye present your bodies. Listen, that, that ye present your bodies. Uh-huh, go ahead. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Oh, God don't want nothing dead. Hallelujah. That you present your, your body a living sacrifice. Oh, maybe you don't have the ability to walk. Hallelujah. Oh, maybe you don't have the ability of speech or to hear. But God said, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh-huh. Holy. Unholy. Holy. Any kind of way. Holy. A fat, skinny, and unholy. Holy. That you present your body holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. You can't come to God any kind of way. Hallelujah. Oh, lady, I told you when you spray them high heels on, them, them jeans on with your little high heel pumps, and then you get in the pool pit talking about you preaching. You ain't bit more holy. You just want somebody to look at you. You ungodly thing. Yeah, maybe you're just so pretty. Yeah, I'll give you that. You are pretty. But let me show you what uh, 
beauty is vain, by the way. But let me show you what pretty and high heels and spray uh, Earl Shy jeans going to get you. Right here in the pit. Hallelujah. Well, you want to look good for all the people. Uh huh. Uh, you want to tiptoe across the stage so everybody can look at you. Hallelujah. Oh, my friends, I would that you would be holy. I would that you would be acceptable unto God because that is your reasonable service. Yes. Yes. Give me the next verse, son. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed. Uh, don't start acting like them. Don't start acting like the world. Uh-huh. Uh, Ella Skip Henderson. And Bishop Hines, y'all don't got like, I ain't seen everybody else's church. I'm talking about y'all's because y'all put them online uh -huh, for everybody to see you. Uh, don't, even, don't look nothing like a church. Uh-huh. Everything is dark in there. Uh-huh. Uh, if, if I think if I could dance and I came over to visit, I might want to get down and, well, I don't know what the dances are now. I probably won't feel like doing some of that stuff. Hallelujah. Oh, because uh, there's a spirit that goes behind this thing. Hallelujah. There's a spirit in the club. Hallelujah. You done brought that spirit out of the club right on into your church. Mm. Hmm. How you know, Pastor Harmon? Well, I know you can't see uh, Pastor Bishop. I know you, you're blind to it. But everybody else see how dark it is in there. Uh -huh. uh, they in there twerking and all the other stuff. Uh -huh. But you're supposed to be holy. Mm-hmm. Don't conform to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all you folks got praise dancers all running across the stage, uh, flipping in their little nighty gown and flipping around and uh, just to act on the stage. Ain't nobody come to see them. When you come to the church, you're supposed to be coming to hear the word of God. Some of you just come because I want to hear the cry. Ooh, the choir sang so good. Girl, I like when they sing this, that, and this a man talking. Mm-hmm. Ain't got a backbone at first. Oh, Pastor Pam, can I carry your bags for you? Why don't you sit on down somewhere? If she a pastor, if she got them guts, let her carry herself. If she want to be a pastor, let her carry her own attache case. Some of you is running behind your bishop. Oh, bishop, can I do this for you? Oh, you ain't got it. That's why your wife's going to leave you. You busy chasing the bishop. What a fool. Stand up and be a man. Be not conformed to this world. Hallelujah. But be ye what? Transformed. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But you can't do it. Mm. Hmm? Oh, I got to take care of my pastor. I'm his armor bearer. No, I got to take care of this girl right here. Hallelujah. Anybody need to take care of the pastor? That's her responsibility. I don't need no other women cook. Oh, pastor, uh, I got some uh, spring water at home for you on the second shelf of the refrigerator. And can't nobody touch it because it's yours. What a nut. What a fool. And that happened before. Man couldn't even go in his own refrigerator because that water was for the bishop. What a fool. And I wouldn't say I wasn't good and saved back then. I wanted to knock him out. Come talking about you can't go in your own refrigerator because that water's for the bishop. What a nut. Mm -hmm. Now I'm good and saved, and all I tell you, oh, you're a fool. Mm -hmm. Read on, son. Be not conformed to this world, huh? But ye be ye transformed by the renewing. Be ye transformed. That means something has to change. You can't come in the church uh, out of the world and still be the same. You can't come in here and say, yeah, I'm saved. But you still can't keep your eyes off the girls, fellas. Uh-huh. You can't be changed, lady, and you can't keep your, your eyes off the guys. You can't be changed and you come sitting here in the front of the pulpit with your short little dress on and uh, keep on moving trying to get the pastor's attention. Uh-huh. Oh, you got to be changed. You can't remain the same. You can't do the things you want to. Uh-huh. And, and lady, uh, you can't uh, withhold from your husband uh, uh, like you used to because there's a change in you. Mm -hmm. Because what you used to do was witchcraft. But now you ain't that no more. Hallelujah. In fact, your body belongs to your husband. And husband, your body belongs to her. That's scripture. Mm 
-hmm. That's scripture, uh, seven, seven chapter of First Corinthians. Uh, don't nobody won't hear about marriage because uh, all you would have to change. But be ye transformed uh -huh, by the renewing of your mind. Something has to change inside your head. If it changes in your head, it'll change your heart. If it changes in your heart, it'll change your actions. Read on, son. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. I'm going to take a, it's going to be a part two. I'm going to tell you, I'm almost, almost at my hour. Uh, going back over there to John. But you have to be transformed. Then you will understand what's acceptable. And the perfect will of God. You would understand that. Hallelujah. But you can't understand it doing your own thing. You can't understand it not abiding in him. You have to abide in the Lord Jesus. If you abide in him, you understand his word. If you abide in him, your mind will change. If you abide in him, your heart will change. If you abide in him, your actions will change. Hallelujah. And then, fellow, when that happens, you're ready to fight. Hallelujah. Oh, but a lot of you on training. A lot of you, oh, you just come to God and some, I don't care how long you think you've been in the church, you just coming in. And we're clipping some things off of you. And I know it's difficult for some of you that uh, you, you and your second marriage. Maybe you've been married 30 years. I done told you, fella, uh, there ain't no statute uh, limitations. Mm -hmm. I know the old mother sitting over there, uh, been there probably 60 years, talking about, honey, oh, that's been 40. God doesn't forgive you. Uh, don't listen to this liar over here. She's an old liar. Uh huh. The old folks don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the book. Your age don't mean nothing to me. When the book says it, I don't care what you got to say. I don't care how old you is. I don't care how long you've been preaching. You're a liar. If you say anything different than what the book says. Hallelujah. And now, I got good sense. I ain't going to say it to her like that. I tell her real nice. Mother, that ain't true. No, mother, this is what the scripture said. See, I got good sense. But what I'm preaching, I ain't got time to uh, make and be your friend. I got to get it out here because uh, you could walk out the door and die. Hallelujah. But if you get this truth, hallelujah, you can change your heart right there where you sit. You can make a change right there. Read on, son. I'm going to take a few more scriptures and we're going to let them go. Verse 14. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I Listen command to you. <laughs> Listen to what he called us, Rochelle. He called me his friend. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, he was said, talking to the disciples there, but he's talking to me too, Rochelle. Listen, don't you want Jesus to call you his friend? Do, do you hear this? But if I don't do what he says, Rochelle, uh, he won't call me his friend. I can't just do what I want to do. It says he's my friend. You can't treat me any, way, any kind of way person there that's looking at me. You can't uh, do me any kind of way and say, oh, you're my friend. Hallelujah. You can't do that. Hallelujah. Well, maybe you can do it, but you know it's not true. Hallelujah. But he called me his friend. Read on, son. Henceforth, I call uh -uh, you. Go back to the top. Ye are verse my. Verse 14. Ye are my friends. Uh-huh. Now hold it. Rochette, he said, I'm his friend. But then there's a little stipulation here. Uh-huh. So listen. Uh, I refer to a whole lot of you as friend. Uh, when I'm here preaching, I say, friend, don't do that, friend. I love you, friend. Mm-hmm. It's to show kindness. It's to show that I love you. It's to show that I don't have no ill will against you. I call you my friend. Hallelujah. Uh, but when it's all said and done, here's the stipulation. Read what he said, D. Ye are my friends. Mm -hmm. if, ye do, if ye do whatsoever I if command you. you do whatsoever I command you. Listen. You are my brother and sister in the Lord. If... You do whatsoever Christ has commanded us. Now, friend, I know folks want to change this. Some folk will tell you, we are all God's children. What a liar. Listen to what the scripture says. Hallelujah. I did a funeral the other, other day. And listen, I wasn't going to tell them people no lie. 
I will get up there and I'm scared because I don't know what these people are going to do to me. But my job is to tell the truth. My commission is to give the truth. No matter who it hurts, including me, I got to give the truth. Why? Because I want Jesus to call me his friend. I want to remain his friend. And if you got to be my enemy in order for him to be my friend, well, hello, enemy, and I still love you. But he called me his friend. He wants you to be his friend. But he says, if ye do whatsoever, I command you. Go ahead, son. Maybe two or three more verses. I'm going to close it up. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, I call you not servants. Listen to this, Rochelle. Jesus said, from now on, I'm not even going to call you servants. Hallelujah. The, 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 the Bible here. This tells us everything we need to know. So Jesus says, from now on, I call you not servants. Go ahead, son. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. See, you don't know uh, what the master doing if you're a servant. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I don't call you servants no more. He called us friend. I just love it, Rochelle. He called me his friend. Read on, son. He says, but I have called you friends. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He said, but I don't, yeah, I don't call you servants no more. Although we serve him, but he said, I ain't going to call you a servant. I'm going to call you my friend. Why? Because he loved me, Rochelle. You call a person your friend because you love them, Brian. You trust them. You call them your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, Rochelle, the scriptures said a, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That's how much he loved me. He called me his friend. He put enough trust in me, Rochelle, to preach his word. Because he said, Daddy, I trust you that you won't change it. I trust it that you'll deliver it just like I put in you. I trust you that you won't put no sugar on top. I trust you that you'll give it and you'll give it with love. Hallelujah. Whether they accept it or not, I trust you with my word. Read on, son. For all the things that I have heard of my father, mm -hmm. I have made known unto you. Verse 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I ordain you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. Hold on right there. We're going to stop at, uh, at the 17. Read 16 again. Verse 16 from mm -hmm. the top. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I ordain you. Uh, uh, listen, you folks that are talking about you found God. You ain't found nothing. You ain't, uh, yeah, some of you can't even find your, your Bible on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. You can't even find your car keys in the house and then talking about you found a God that you can't even see. Hallelujah. No, God saw me. Uh -huh. I was lost, my friend, but now I'm found. He found me. In fact, he already knew where I was. Uh -huh. He chose me. I didn't choose God. Uh -uh. I didn't choose him. He chose me. And when I understood it, Rochelle, I was so thankful uh, that he looked on me, a nobody, uh, just a little old fella, uh, not well known, but still God just chose me. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he chose me. Not because I'm such a, a smart guy. He didn't choose me for that. Hallelujah. Not because I'm so good looking. And not because everybody loved me. Uh, in fact, it's the opposite. Uh-huh. Because I was wretched and undone. Nobody could use me for anything. I wasn't worth nothing. Couldn't do anything. And God said, I can use him. Let me touch him. Oh, let me massage his heart. Hallelujah. Let me make him somebody. And that's just what he did, my friend. Hallelujah. God has made me who I am today. Your silver and your gold. Oh, your dead president. Oh, none of that stuff move me. Uh, this preacher can't be bought. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what kind of job you can offer. You can't buy me. I've already been bought with a price from the Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I've been bought 
with the price. I'm not for sale. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing you can offer me that's going to change me. Hallelujah. I'm going to remain the same. Hallelujah. Let them keep on watering it down. Uh-uh, Pastor, I'm going to remain the same. Uh-huh. For generations. Let me tell you something. You know why these preachers ain't changed? Because they've been doing wrong for so long. They've been doing wrong for so long that it just feels right. There is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end there are the ways of death. Uh, Y'all been preaching lollipop and, and sugar so long, uh, you think it's right. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them pastors will ever preach on marriage because they're going to lose the whole congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm ain't going to preach on a whole lot of sin either. Mm -hmm. All they're going to do is preach on encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. Uh, but fellas, within that encouragement, there's a whole lot of sin going on. And that's why Pastor Harmon is here uh, hollering and screaming. I ain't got time to make and be your buddy. I ain't got time for that. Because like I said, you can flip this switch off, walk out there and get hit by one of them transit city buses, and then you dead and gone. Read on, son. You have not chosen me, but I mm -hmm. have chosen you uh -huh. and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Now, it's my job to bring fruit. Let me tell you the example here, fella. You uh, folks that I've been asking to come on and join the fight. Hallelujah. It ain't many of you, but some of you done came in and got in the fight with me. Some of you are standing uh, beside me. Some of you are saying, Pastor Harmon, you send a little message. I agree. I agree with you, Pastor Harmon. It's a hard message, but I accept it. Thank God for you. You're my fruit. Hallelujah. You're the fruit uh, that's being produced that Pastor Harmon is up here preaching. And some of your friends now, uh, they don't want to hear you because uh, you don't friended that old loudmouth pastor over there. Uh-huh, but you stood with me. Uh, you got there in the fight and you're standing with me. You're saying, Pastor Harmon, keep on preaching. Keep on preaching for sir. You ain't got to worry about that. I ain't going nowhere. I told you I already been purchased. I'm not for sale. I'm going to keep on preaching the truth. Read on, son. And that your fruit should remain should remain. That's why I got to keep preaching to you. The one, the fruit that I done, uh, gain uh, for the body of Christ. Uh huh. I got to keep encouraging. Why? It says that my fruit may remain. The people that I brought here, I got to keep encouraging you so you don't turn back. That you stay in the fight. Uh huh. And then uh, you encourage others to come on in the house. Hallelujah. And as that fruit uh, uh, grow and mature, uh huh. Pastor Harmon is getting older and older. Hallelujah. And uh, pretty soon, I'm going to be like uh, 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 Sister Mary Smith. Uh huh. Uh, my body done got weak. I can't do a whole lot. Uh huh. Uh, but Sister Smith, I know you're there praying for me, cousin. Keep praying for me. Uh, Pastor Harmon is getting stronger and stronger. But one day, uh huh, I'm going to be in the same condition Mother is, Rochelle. And all I'm going to be able to do is sit there and pray for the people that are here preaching. You that are on the battlefield with your fists up, they got all the strength and the youth in you. And then all Pastor Harmon can do now is pray for you. Father, continue to strengthen them. Make them strong in you, Lord, because that's all I can do. Hallelujah. But I'm still in the fight. Thank you so much, Sister Mary. You stay on in the fight. Keep on praying for this old fella here. Oh, in your case, this young fella. Keep on praying for me. Hallelujah. Read on, son. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. These things I command you that ye love one another. These things I command. Jesus commanded this. That we love one another. This, this gonna be, you can, we're going to uh, continue next week. This is the last scripture. That we love one another. And so many are saying, well, Pastor Harmon, how can you say you love all these preachers that you're talking about? Hallelujah. I told you, my friend, you need to understand the scripture. I don't do it to shame them. I do it to bring them to their attention. Uh-huh. Uh, their other friends ain't going to tell them. And they're just going to walk right here into the pit. But I'm going to stand here and bring it to your attention and call you out on it. You know you're wrong. Straighten this thing up. Go to your congregation. Apologize to them. And get yourself right. Should I just stand here and let you go to hell? Well, listen, friend, if I'm all messed up, don't let me go to hell. Don't let me run to this pit here. Say something to me. Don't worry about my feelings. 
Give me what God's word says. I don't want to be in hell. And some of you think, you're so foolish, you think you got time. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm going to ease it into them. No, don't ease nothing. They don't have time. The scripture has already told us it is appointed unto man to die once. But after this, the judgment, I don't know when I'm going to die, but I want to be ready. Hallelujah. I want to be ready to meet him. This is what he commanded me, Rochelle, to love one another. I can't love you if I have the truth in my hands, in my possession but I hide it from you. That's not love, my friend. Maybe today, my friend, you really want to abide in the Lord Jesus and you're finding out that you haven't been abiding in him. You're finding out there's some hard choices to abide in him. But fella, is that relationship worth it? Huh? Is that man or woman worth going to hell for? Is that income that comes in your church, is that worth going to hell for, for? The position you hold in your church, is it worth going to hell for? Or do you want to straighten up and fly right? Do you want to abide in him? Friend, if that's you today, let's go to him in prayer. Father, in heaven, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for your word. Your word is true. Oh, God, your word is true. Father, I bring a few friends before you. Oh, you see them, Lord. And they want to ask you, friend, if this is you, ask him, Father, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I thought that I was abiding in you. Oh, but I see that I'm not abiding in you, and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. Make me right before you. I want to be justified before you. If I leave this life now, I will be totally and eternally separated from you. How shall I escape? If I neglect so great a salvation, Lord, forgive me. I found myself neglecting that salvation that you gave and that you speak about. Forgive me, oh God. Allow me to get my life right, Lord by accepting you and asking you to come into my life. I repent of my sin. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Take control of my body, my soul, and my spirit. In your hands, Lord, I give myself. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Friend, do you want to abide in him? Or do you want to just continue to, to live it out your way? You cannot do anything without him. Hallelujah. He already told us that we can do nothing without him. And I know a lot of folks think that you're walking with him. But friend, I ask you just to read the book. See if Pastor Harmon has told you anything Contrary wise. And if you find that your pastor or the church you attend have taught contrary to the book, friend, go to that pastor. Tell them to explain or justify what they say to you in the book because your soul, your very soul is on the line. Friend, if they can't meet what the book says, you need to find yourself another church home. Hallelujah. And maybe it don't necessarily have to be this one. Anywhere that's preaching the unadulterated word, anywhere that's preaching God's truth is where you need to be. Hallelujah. I have uh, brothers and sisters that I follow to Christ. Hallelujah. And some of them, uh-huh, has got off track. Some of them are following these idiots. Hallelujah. They're not exempt. I follow them. Some of them watch me and get mad with me. I don't care nothing about that. I wish, I wish you'd come back uh, 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 to the holiness like I followed you to. 
How is it that you've been in this thing longer than me and I'm still here uh, preaching the same thing that I was taught and you go to these lollipop preachers and everything is all horky dory now. You can do a little more of this and that. I don't care nothing about that being my family. I tell the truth. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Just like Jesus said, he that doeth the will of my father. Hallelujah. Let me give you the death clock before I send you home. I just want you folks that's new folks watching me. I ain't got no loyalty to brothers and sisters when it comes to preaching this word of God. I tell the truth. Even on my own family. Hallelujah. I tell the truth. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want them to go to hell. Hallelujah. Y'all led me to Christ. I followed you. Then you start making some turns and shortcuts. And I... I'm still standing here. Well, where y'all going? What y'all doing? Get back here in the fight. The death clock. Before we let you go. The death clock is screaming that it has claimed 4,073 souls. 4,073 souls. Don't let it be you. I sure don't want it to be me. Hallelujah. But thank God. Glory be to God that it, if it is me, I'll be in the hands of the Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. But you who have not accepted him, if the death clock claims you, my friend, it's so sad, but this is where you'll end up. Those of you that have chose to walk with him, thank God for you. I'm so glad you made the right choice. Let me say to our friends there on Facebook and on YouTube very shortly, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for allowing Pastor Harmon to speak to your hearts. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Uh, there will be a part two uh, to this message. I wanted to, uh, most times I have to cover a whole chapter so you get the correct understanding. I can't give you two or three verses and skedaddle along. That's why half of you lost already. Because your pastor done gave you a, one scripture here and one over there and somewhere else. And you don't know what to believe. Some of you are thinking that it's five or six gods. There's only one God that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go. Um, we did the death clock. Okay, well, thank you for coming in and uh, coming and joining us on YouTube and Facebook. Hopefully, at the Lord's will, we will see you again next week Sunday at the same time at 1110 a.m. And until that time, take care of yourselves and each other. God bless you. So long.